guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are doing a very exciting video. This is the Chanel Spring Collection look number two slash review number two. On Monday, I posted a video with the entirety of my haul of the Chanel Spring Collection 2018. I posted all of the products, all of the swatches. So if you guys want to see that, make sure to go watch that. I'm assuming you've already watched it, but if you haven't, you know, just open a side tab and go watch that after you finish watching this video. So as I mentioned in that video today, I will be creating look number two with the nine eyeshadow palette and I will also be reviewing the Poudre à Lèvres product here. I've been getting a lot of messages and DMs about this product here. You guys are very curious. I'm very curious. I want to see what's going to happen. What's it going to be like? You guys just have to stick around to the end to find out. So before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know whenever I post a new video. I am so excited about this collection in general because first of all, it is bleak winter. It's snowing today. It's gross. It's cold. It's been terrible for like a month, but companies are coming out with their spring collections already. And I'm like, ooh, spring, bright colors. That sounds nice. I want that. I don't want like bleak, cold, harsh winter anymore. Spring, spring sounds nice. If you guys have any requests for eyeshadow looks with this palette, let me know down in the comments. You guys know I'm very open to that. All of my previous collections that I've done in the past several months, whenever people request, hey, can you do this color combo with this color combo? Boom, video is done in the next week. So if you guys have a specific look in mind, if you have a specific eyeshadow you want me to focus on, let me know down in the comments. So let's just jump in and see how I created this eyeshadow look and also what my thoughts and opinions are on the Poudre à Lèvres Lip Balm and Powder Duo. Okay guys, let's get started. We're gonna go back into the palette and I'm gonna go for another bold look today. I'm quite drawn to the green shade because in a lot of the advertisement for this collection, it's a lot of the green shadows and green liner that you see like when the, the models are posing, it's a lot of just like green eyeshadow. So I think I'm gonna do that today as well. So using a big fluffy brush, I'm going into that first shade and using that as a transition shade so that we don't have like, you know, too many harsh lines. Okay, so using a wide brush like this, I am just going into the green shade here and sweeping that all over my lid. It's kind of funny to be doing these videos on like spring collections because today in Montreal it's like kind of warm. I think it's like at zero degrees today, but there's like a little mini snowstorm. So it just feels like, it feels a little bit early <laughs> for a spring collection, but at the same time, it's kind of inspiring to have spring collections and spring colors when it's so cold and bleak out. And I'm just taking it up a little bit because in the photos, I swear the green is like wall to wall on all the eye. And I'm not sure I want to do that exactly because I have errands drunk today, so I don't think I want to run around with a whole green eye look like that. See, the color is quite pigmented. Like this is just a color without any fix plus or anything, and it's quite pigmented. This is performing exactly how the heel or turquoise color performed in the last video. So I'm pretty impressed with that. So in the last video, I was wearing the teal color, um, the transition shade, and the darker brown color here. I wore the whole look for about eight hours and none of the shades creased. They stayed exactly how I placed them. However, the liquid lip, the Rouge Allure Ink 164 Enthusiasta, that was completely gone. There was no trace of lipstick whatsoever. It was just like, poof, gone. I should have taken a video of it. Maybe I'll do a video of this later today so I can give you guys a track of what the makeup looks like several hours later. But yeah, the lipstick was very comfortable to wear. It, it felt like a normal lipstick. It didn't feel like a liquid lipstick, but it did not stay on very long. So taking my fluffy brush again, I am just blending that out. I just want the green to be like a slow gradient. I don't want it to have a harsh line. So I just want to darken this up a little bit, so I'm going to go into the matte black shade with a fluffy blending brush, and I'm going to put that in the crease. There's a little bit of fallout with the green shadow just here. I didn't notice any fallout in the previous video, so maybe it's just this shade in particular that does some fallout. I feel like adding the black to the green just kind of makes it turn into like a dark forest green. I'm not mad at it. If you hear random car noises, that's because there's a lot of snow plows zooming on the street to clean up all the snow. I just, it's like I'm here like doing the spring collection and it's like a snowstorm outside. I also feel like the green shade that I placed on the lid here is more of like a warm tone green. I think there's like a little bit of 
some like gold or yellow flecks in it, so it's definitely more of a warm tone green, which is good because I am more warm tone, so I like warm colors. So I'm gonna take a small tapered brush. Oh, a little brush, a little bristle in my lash. I'm gonna take a small tapered brush and use that black shade again and just trace under my lashes here. So I'm going to use this pink highlight shade and place that under my brow bone. I'm just gonna sweep whatever's left of the pink shade here and just sweep it on the inner corner here. I just wanna make sure at the end of the green or black color got too close to the inner part of my eye because I don't want my eyes to look too small. So also going into the pink shade, I'm going to take a little tiny mini brush like this and I'm gonna place that on the inner corner of my eye. So I'm going back into the Steel Azure Waterproof Liner number 938. Marie Chiaro. Um, I st I'm still not pronouncing these right. If you know how to pronounce them, uh, please leave it down in the comments. There was actually a second eyeliner that came with a collection. It was something Volcanico, Volcanica, but it was basically just like a really dark gray slash black and I don't know, I was just like, I have black liners, that doesn't seem that exciting. And the green liner to me kind of seems like to go better with the whole look because like I said like all of the ads that I saw were like a lot of like the green shadow so like green liner green shadow that works better so I'm using this liner to go into the bottom waterline and I'm also going to go on the top waterline and tight line and I'm going into my Dior pump and volume mascara okay so now that this wonderful springtime look is finished let's move on to the meat of this video which is the poudre à lèvres duo review I am so excited to do this because I remember seeing Nikki Tutorials do a video a couple weeks ago and I was just so intrigued because I've never quite seen a product like this. So let's just dive right in and check it out. So on one side you have this clear balm and the other side is a powder and the idea is you apply the balm and then you apply the powder over top. The compact comes with two applicators. One looks like a mini brush in itself, like a quite a nice brush actually for a product that comes with makeup. So there's no instructions or anything in in the box or in the package it's just the product as is there's no real instructions so the description on the box is moisturizing lip balm and matte powder duo for lips and cheeks with applicators so i guess you could use this as a blush as well that makes sense if you want to just kind of tie all the colors in together so i'm assuming that i use this little applicator here for the lip balm and then i will use this eyeshadow applicator that came with the package for the powder because I think with this I'll be able to pack on more color, more product. I think. Let's just dive right in and check it out, guys. I'm really excited about this. This is like really cool. Okay, so I'm taking this little brush here. My lips are so chapped, they really needed this lip balm. There's no scent added to the lip balm, it's just a clear lip balm. I kind of wonder if you could do this with any lip balm and like blush. My Chanel advisor, Miriam, told me that I could use any blush that I had at home to transform into a color, so you probably could just use a lip balm and a powder. It feels nice. It feels like a really thin lip balm. It's not very thick. It's It felt a little bit waxy to the touch when I played with it last time, but applying it on my lips, it does not feel waxy or heavy. It just feels like a really thin layer of lip balm so let's get into the color there's a lot that picks up on the back of this little applicator here the first thing that I'm noticing is that it's hard to get an even color everywhere. Like I kind of have to go like this. Like when I go like this, you can kind of see where all the little cracks are and you can kind of see where the powder is and isn't. I'm actually kind of impressed with how much pigment is showing up. 
because Miriam described this product as like a natural lip color, but I definitely got like one of the darker colors. I believe there were three shades to choose from. So this is the 410 Rosso Pompeiano, and there are three shades to choose from. This is the second darkest shade. I think there was a pinky shade, there's a reddish shade, and then there was a really more dark, kind of, not burgundy, but just like a darker red color. So I got kind of like the one in the in between. Let me just add a little bit more. So first thing I have to say is that this color is very beautiful. It's very pigmented. It works much better than I thought it would. I didn't think it was going to have this much color payoff. However, this is a lot more work than a regular lipstick. Like this took several more minutes than a regular lipstick would. And also, it, if you have dry lips, I don't think this is gonna work for you because I have normal to dry lips. It's really cold out, so my lips are like even more dry than usual. And you can definitely see all the little creases, all little lines on my lips. You know, I think if you have like lip injections, it kind of like plumps and stretches the skin out, so you won't be able to see any of that. But I don't have that, so you can definitely see a lot more of the little creases around my lips. I'm gonna try to apply a little bit more balm over top to see if that helps. I'm gonna go in with my finger and just like tap it on top of my lip color. So I just added a little bit of a lip balm. You know, it helped give it a little bit more moisture, but I feel like my lips look a lot more creasy than they do with a regular lipstick. If you are going to use this for a really, really natural look, like if you just wanted like a flush of color, you could just slap on the lip balm and just kind of tap your finger in the product and just pat it on and go, and that's that would totally work. That being said, the color does build up. You can work with it and get it to be a darker color. Like just off the bat, this shade here, this duo, the 410 Rosso Pompeiano, is pretty dark in itself, so if you kind of just like smear it all over, it might look a little bit messy. Like I mentioned before, there was a lighter shade, there was a pinkier shade, so maybe that one is better if you're just kind of looking for something really quick and on the go. I touched on this in my previous video on Monday, but to me, this seems like a product that you would see backstage at a fashion show that a makeup artist would use. Like this doesn't seem like a product that I'm gonna throw in my bag and have in my purse when I wanna like touch up my makeup when I'm out and about. You know, but you know, you never know. Maybe my opinion will change. I'll let you know if it does. The color is beautiful. In all honesty, this product worked much better than I thought it would. I honestly didn't have high hopes for it. I really didn't think I would get much color payout at all. I just figured it would be very light and kind of invisible. But as you can see, this is just the lip balm and the powder and a little bit of lip balm over top. I can feel the lip product a little bit more than I would with a regular lipstick. It's almost like when you have a liquid lipstick, you kind of feel the presence a little bit more. I think that's what I can compare it to. But all in all, I'm quite impressed with this product. I really didn't think I would like it. I thought it, I thought it looked very gimmicky. Um, I still think it is a little bit. I don't see myself reaching for this every single day or like throwing it in my purse and doing touch-ups, like I said. So this product does say that it is a lip and cheek color. It doesn't say anything about eyes or eye safety. Um, it is a very beautiful, rich, pigmented color. So I would be tempted to try it on my eyes. However, I don't know if it'll stain or if it's safe for the eyes. So, you know, if you are inclined to do that, I would say maybe try to reach out to someone from Chanel and ask them if that's okay before you know, applying it on your eyes directly. So I have a little bit of blush right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my brush and try to apply some of this color on my cheeks just to see what it gives. I have a feeling that this is going to be very pigmented, so I'm going to go very lightly. Ooh, okay, yeah. As I suspected, this is quite pigmented. The blush isn't bad. It's not bad as a blush, it's just, it's very pigmented. It also works great as a blush, it's just very intense, so use very sparingly. Overall, this product does work. It just requires a bit more effort. I think if you're someone who loves neat, new, innovative products, if you kind of get bored of regular stuff and you want to try something new, something weird, I think this is for you. If you are looking for just a lip color and just have it be easy and ready to use, I don't think this is for you. I am intrigued about using this as an eyeshadow though, so I think I will try to get in contact with someone and ask them if I can use this on my eyes because it is such a 
bright, intense red that I think this could work for an eye look. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. So I think this is all I have for you guys for today. So this is video number two for the Chanel Spring 2018 collection. This is look number two. Make sure to leave in the comments what shades you wanna see next, what color combination you'd like to see. Let me know so I can create it for you guys. There's nine shades in this palette, so we can go a lot of different ways. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed eyeshadow look number two. So before we go, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know whenever I post a new video. I am here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I hope you guys enjoyed your day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And that's all I have for you guys for today. So I'll see you guys next time.